Hi class, today I am going to be reading A Socrates Against the Sophists. I have chosen the Joshua Dinsdale translation and I'm going to be reading it from the introduction. If all those who undertake instruction would speak the truth nor make greater promises than they can perform, they would not be accused by the illiterate. Now those who inconsiderably have dared to boost have been the cause that those men seem to have reason better, who indulge their indul indolence than such a study philosophy. For first, who would not detest and despise those who pass their time in sophistic chickenery, who pretend indeed that they seek truth, but from the beginning of their promises labor to speak falsities. For I think it manifests to all that the faculty of foreknowing future things is about our nature. Nay, we are so from such prudence that Homer, who for his wisdom has acquired the highest fame, has sometimes introduced gods in his poem, consulting about futurity, not that he knew the nature of their minds, but that he would shoot us, that this was one of those things which are impossible for man. These men are arrived at that pitch of insolence, that they endeavor to persuade the younger that if they will be their disciples, they shall know what is the best to be done and thereby be made happy. And after they have erected themselves into teachers of such sublime things, they are not ashamed to ask for them four or five minus. Those, though do they sell any other possession for much less than its value, they would not hesitate to grant themselves mad. But now exposing to sale all virtue and happiness, if we will believe them, they dare argue that as being wise men, they ought to be preceptors of others. Yet they say indeed that they are not indigent of money, while to diminish its idea, they call it pitiful gold and silver, that they require a trifling gain, and only promise to make those next to immortal, who will commence their disciples. But what is the absurd of all, that they are different of those very persons from who they are to receive the reward, that they themselves are to teach them justice, for make an agreement that the money shall be deposited with those whom they never taught, doing right in regard of their own security, but acting contrary to their own promises. For it becomes those who teach any other thing by a cautious bargain to avoid controversy. For nothing impedes, but those who are ingenious in other respects may not be honest in regard of contracts. Yet how can it be but absurd that they pretend to teach virtue and temperance as an art, should not chiefly trust to their own disciples. For they, who are just towards other men, will certainly not trespass against those by whom they were made both good and equitable. When therefore some of the unlearned considering all these things see who profess teaching wisdom and happiness, indigent, indigent themselves of many things, requiring a small sum of their scholars and observing contradictions and silly sentences, though they see them in actions, not in actions, professing likewise that they know futurity, yet not capable of speaking, of deliberating properly of things pre present, and that those are more consistent with themselves and do more things right who follow common opinions than those who say they are possessed of wisdom. When they see this, I say, they think such disputations mere trifles, a loss of time in ideal things, and not a real improvement of the human kind. Basically, what I grasped from this whole concept in the excerpt of Against the Sophists is that it relates to, um, to basically the promises that teachers or sophists make to their students, which they may not be able to remain stable. To be a sophist in ancient Greek was problematic, morally suspected, and generally desired to teaching slippery languages as an alternative of morally sound doctrine. I think against the sophist has a lot to do in correlation with students and teacher relationships. And I think that even though this was written in ancient Greece, it definitely relates to us today in 2010 and even in the future. Thank you.